Hi, I'm Rikas from CYC Motor. Today we're going to have a brief look of the throttle and pedal assist settings and what exactly it does to your ride. Okay, so we'll start with our throttle settings. If you go into the CYC Motor app and you connect your motor, then under the settings tab you'll find your throttle settings. So in the throttle settings, the first option you have is to turn your throttle control on or off. So this is usually a function that we have for our one-to-one -one wiring harness. In the case where you don't want to run a throttle, for example, with the photon motor system, you don't need the throttle necessarily. You can just use pedal assist only and to avoid errors and stuff like that, you can turn off your throttle control as you won't be needing it. If you do decide to use your throttle control, there are a few other options that we usually turn all to zero and I will explain to you why. So secondly, you have your throttle ramp time. So essentially what this is, is the time it takes for the motor to deliver its full power. So after you've engaged with the motor and you, for example, depress the throttle to get the full power of the motor, this is the time it will take for the motor to ramp up to that full power. This is some features that some of our users like and then other people maybe do not prefer this option. So, for example, if you set the ram time to two seconds and your motor power to one kilowatt, it will take two seconds for the motor to ramp up to that full uh, one kilowatt of power delivery. This helps, for example, for a motor like X1 Pro where you have five or six kilowatt and you don't want the motor to just instantly throw you off the bike, but rather gradually ramp up to that full power. After ram time, there's two parameters that basically go with custom throttles, which will be dead band or the minimum and maximum throttle voltage. So generally this is already set for our stock throttles, but for other throttles, this is usually not the default setting for them. So the dead band is how far the throttle is depressed before it engages. And for some throttles, they will always be on if there's not a proper dead band set for a custom throttle which also links to what I mentioned secondly, is the minimum and the maximum voltage that is received from the throttle or custom throttle, which will be the minimum when it's closed or the maximum when it's open. If you add your own custom throttle, these values may vary, but there is a calibration option to then calibrate the minimum and the maximum so the throttle is set correctly. If, however, you're in assist level one, for example, and you're still receiving power, you will need to increase the dead band of the throttle so it is not engaged when it is in the off position. Then there is a parameter that is not available for the X1 Stealth or the X1 Photon, is something we call soft start. So what this does is, in some bicycle cases or cassettes that don't have 109 poles or uh, points of engagement, which maybe have a bigger backlash, which is usually um, stronger freewheels as well. When using high power like the X1 Pro, sometimes the cassette will slam into the hub, causing the freewheel to fail in the back. So we created this parameter so that the motor will slowly ramp up in RPM to catch up to the freewheel before delivering the power, thus avoiding the slam of the cassette into the hub itself. This can, however, feel like a bit of a delayed throttle response, but it will, however, prevent that you do not damage your free hub. Uh, secondly, we're going to look at the pedal assist settings. So if you go back to the settings page and then go into your pedal assist settings, you will find the page that I'm currently looking at. At the top, we'll find the same as the throttle settings. You can decide whether you want to turn on or off your pedal assist. Again, this will determine which platform you're running. For example, with the X1 Photon, this will definitely be on, but if you're running six kilowatts with the X1 Pro, maybe you do not want your pedal assist to activate your motor. Maybe it's a throttle only setup. After that, we have the torque sensor sensitivity. This might be a confusing topic for most people. What this essentially means is the torque required to engage the torque sensor. So if it's set to 100% at the most sensitive, the torque sensor will engage with as little as 2 newton. If it's set to zero, it will be up to 10 newton meters of force required before the pedal assist will engage. If the reason we do this is because we have a modular system. We cannot always rely on the client to install the spindle and assembly correct. So if, for example, the plastic sleeve will break or there's any debris or anything 
blocking the spindle going inside it is possible for the spindle to press on the torque sensor thus creating a torque reading so then we made this torque sensor sensitivity so that if it is installed correctly and there's a torque reading the motor will not automatically run when there's a cadence reading as well so this is for user safety as well we do recommend them to turn up the torque sensor sensitivity when receiving the unit but we do not want the unit to just run upon receiving or incorrect installation from the client moving on from that we have the power ramp up time so what this does is when you pedal you have a bunch of spikes of torque readings that go high low high low this is how the firmware will filter the torque reading going in so if you set the power ramp up time to be long it means it takes much longer for the average torque to go up giving a much smoother experience when you're pedaling it won't be as instantaneous response whereas if you set the power ramp up time much lower the response will be much faster for example for mountain biking when you pedal and you give an input you will immediately get the response where for example if you're doing commuting you want the ramp up time to be slower which will give a much uh, smoother power delivery experience when pedaling the bike for motor assist factor, it pertains to how hard you need to pedal to get the full assistance from the motor. For example, if you have set 60 newton meters and one kilowatt, and you set the value to 50%, it will be 100 newton meters that you need to input into the cranks to receive the full support from the motor. So the mapping from the zero to 100% is from 100% being you only need to apply 50 newton meters to receive the full support from the motor whereas if you set it to zero you need to apply 150 newton meters to the crank to get the full assist from the motor the reason you would like to do this is for example in a mountain biking experience sometimes when you get to a very steep hill and you need to pedal harder and harder sometimes it feels like the support of the motor runs out but if you map it correctly and you know how hard you can pedal there will still be support left in the motor when getting to that point whereas in other cases some people like to just spin the cranks and then want full assistance from the motor all the time which means that if they pedal maybe at only 50 newton meters they will still receive the full support of the motor and not needing to work that hard to get the full support from the motor in the advanced segment of pedal assist we have two start and end conditions meaning we have cat and start, which is the safe way to do pedal assist in mid-drive motors, but it has a drawback. For example, when you stop on a hill and you want to continue pedaling, but you're unable to move the cranks to get a cadence reading for the motor to support you, you can turn off the cat and start function, which means the torque sensor will be torque based only. If there is then a torque applied above 50 newton meters, the motor will activate and then give you support to drive you further up the hill. After that, we also have the pedal backwards cutoff. Because the motor has a bit of an overrun, when you are using the system in pedal assist mode, sometimes people don't want the motor to fully overrun, so then you can pedal backwards half a turn and the motor will immediately cut so this is also something that can be learned and used to some people's advantage when the motor has a bit of overrun and they don't want to get in a dangerous condition they can just pedal back slightly and the motor will cut immediately okay guys that's it for today i hope this sheds a bit more clarity over the throttle and pedal assist settings uh, i hope you found this video informative and it gave you more information about what's going on in the app itself contact us for more information and i'll see you guys soon